so this week I thought I would do um, something because the most common question is always where to get scrap copper from um, so I thought I'd do a video on showing the best places to get it from and not only that the easiest places uh, where you can source copper you all know that I keep all my copper there's my lovely hoard here Ooh, my lovely copper tanks um, I keep it all for future casting, stacking, that kind of thing. Uh, not everybody does that, you know, it's a good bit of bread and butter. So I thought I would show the best places to get it from. But not only that, you know, our circumstances are all different. Some of us are hobbyists, um, others, uh, depending on, you know, what you're actually doing for a living. So some might get it through their job, plumbers, electricians, also, you know, you could be processing e-waste, um, vehicle dependent. So, you know, you could be like me, you've just got an X5 <laughs> or you might have a van. So I'm going to go through the best places to get scrap copper from and the easiest places and just different sources. And also hopefully share something new. You know, we're <sighs> this hopefully will be useful for beginner scrappers and also um, for the more experienced people, um, I actually taught my yard something not long ago, which I was surprised I didn't know about uh, as a source of copper. Most of us know about it. I know we do, but um, I'll go through that a bit later in the video. And sometimes, and I'm, I'm always an advocate for this, the little guys, they really, they really add up. Um, and so I'm going to go through in a bit more detail. Switch the camera, you know, I only like being on for a little bit. <laughs> I'll switch the camera to the good stuff and um, get into it. So this video is all about the orange gold. Okay, so we all know that obviously the there are appliances where you can get copper. It's a lottery these days as to whether you're going to get copper or aluminium. But basically, the transformers and the motors is what we're mainly looking at. So big appliances like dishwashers, tumble dryers, washing machines will have a motor like this. Depending on the make, uh, you will be looking at a copper or an aluminium motor in there. It used to be copper, copper, copper. These days, yes, it's 50-50. So my advice, as we all know, cut it and have a look to see. So this is one, I can't remember if I actually got this out of a, I think I got this out of a washing machine. Um, I, I haven't tested it to see whether it's copper or aluminium, so you can find out along with me. It's burnt out. You can see how black the motor is. Okay, so this one is showing that this outer coil is actually aluminium. Boo hiss. If you're lucky, you'll find a copper one, but all is not lost. If you are a uh, someone who's got time to process, you can take this apart and sometimes the inner winding will be copper. So I have an armature in there like this. This is a small example where there'll be one of these that has copper in. Um, they are quite difficult to process. Now this is an example of I think um, a food mixer. So the smaller appliances can sometimes yield quite nice copper too. So you'll have a hand food mixer and inside it will be something like this. These are really easy to get. You just literally cut it and it uncoils. Like I said, the armatures are a bit more tricky, but what a beautiful source of copper that is. And then you've got um, the kind of smaller kitchen appliances. So like a microwave. Now this is the thing that I taught my yard. Now I know that everyone in who's kind of active in the YouTube scrapping community knows where to get the scrap copper from in a microwave. Um, but 
the people, the guys at the scrapyard didn't, weren't aware that inside these magnetrons, now I haven't got a process one I can show you, but I can show you a picture, is that inside these magnetrons is a nice wad of copper in there. So I keep all of these, but you do have to, there are some safety precautions. If you're going to strip these, check out some of the safety videos on these. Um, the old ones have some nasty chemicals in. Always safety first with whatever you're doing. Also, the thing about microwaves is they typically have a big, beefy transformer. The weight in microwaves is, is it comes from these transformers. They're huge. Now, again, it's 50-50 whether you're going to be lucky enough to find copper or aluminium one. Um, I have always been very lucky, actually, with microwaves. This is one that I took out of a microwave, which has got a nice copper transformer. Not only that, there's a mini motor that turns the turntable plate, which would be one like this. So easy to get to, you just rip off the casing. I've shown it in many of my videos, and there it is. So microwaves, they're, they're, they're fairly, fairly standard. Look, these are actually the same. So it'd be interesting if I could remember which, which types they came out of, because they're actually the same. So other kitchen appliances, so obviously hand mixers, blenders, they're all going to have this kind of setup, this kind of turning motor armature with some nice copper on them. Break them up, they're, they're good. The only one that is an absolute beast that I would just chuck straight into motors and transformers is the Nutribullet because they are, you literally need a bullet to get into the things. Okay, so what's all this copper from some of you will with your beady eyes will be looking and you'll tell straight away what some of this stuff is from um it's obvious to some so obviously these are examples of the different yokes you can get in crt um televisions or the old style computer monitors the crt are the big fat ones the cathode ray, cathode ray tube uh and they all have a yoke in Sometimes the setup will be a bit smaller, like this. You get all sorts of small yolks. There's a couple that I haven't actually done, so they'll look like this when you take them off. I've done a video with the TVs. You have to be careful that you don't break the tube. Um, but that's what they look like. Nice and straightforward. Back to the microwave. This is an example of the copper that you'll get out of the microwave. Um, as well as the big transformer and the mini motor, you'll get one of these. Again, really easy to just snip that copper off. So what, you know, why wouldn't you? That's like a little, little dream of copper right there in one little microwave. Um, in your kind of motors like blenders, you're quite likely to find little ones like this. And again, these are actually pretty easy to strip out. Uh, it's not like the Hoover motors, which I'll come on to, where you've got to get some casings off and stuff. This is pretty easy. And, and the way these start, um, a couple in here. Here, this is a bigger example. This is a bigger example. They're actually really easy, easy to get out. So you've got screws, you hold it with the pliers and you unscrew it and then that literally just reveals nice quick and easily one of these of all different sizes so they're a bit of a dream now when you start getting into your e-waste the copper kind of changes so you no longer have this kind of easy big wad of copper that you can get out of something like with these yolks and what happens is you kind of have to put a bit more work into what you're getting but the rewards can still be really big and an example of that is what I've got in this tub here many of you have seen this tub I was working on this when I had covid so in here we've got a load of inductors so the inductors are these copper toroids that you find on circuit boards 
tightly wound sometimes. They're not always. Some of them are, you know, a little bit less tightly round, but I've still got a nice bit of thick copper, so I still get it off. They've got a ferrite ring, or ferrite toroid inside. And yeah, I basically, if they're easy to get to, I whip these off the circuit boards because you can see how quickly they add up. Okay, they add up really nice and quickly. Nice, lovely bit of weight and a uh, nice bit of copper. Of course, if you don't want to take the time to fully strip this, you can just take these off and chuck them in with motors and transformers, which is, you know, you can't complain at that. Okay, and as per my way in the other day, motors and transformers going for 500 pounds a tonne, you know, that can add up pretty quick. So it's worth it. It is worth it. So there we go. That's where the circuit boards. Now also coming with boards is getting into kind of your PC e-waste. And sometimes if you're lucky, you'll get one of these. A beautiful copper heat sink. Now I, in honesty, have not come across as many of those as I would like. But uh, I'll show you some examples of some boards with these on. Look, they're just beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. And they've got beautiful weight to them. Now, this was a thinner one. I think this was actually off of a graphics card. But it's still a nice wad of copper. So if you're breaking down e-waste, this is what you want. Another example are these. So these are what we call the copper stackers. These are heat sinks from out of a PC. They've got a really nice little uh, cylinder of copper in there, a bit like a little shot glass. So we call these copper stackers because these themselves, I wouldn't melt into something, I would just literally stack them up. And you get different sizes. So you've got big ones, little ones. And this is what they're like when they come out of the heat sink. Really, absolutely delicious. Uh, under here, when I clear this again, I've got an example of a really good circuit board that I would show you how it's really low grade, but how you can poof, max up those profits. So back into the e-waste, sometimes you'll come across these absolutely beautiful copper toroids. They are toroidal transformers. It's basically a bit like a giant inductor, but it's a, it's a transformer, so you'd get this instead of one of these square ones cube ones and I love them they're beautiful to strip I have stripped some in my videos my techniques changed over the time probably got a big one in here I can show you I do love them I don't always strip them sometimes I just keep who doesn't love a massive copper toroid really heavy but they've got obviously a big wad of ferrite inside which I tend to also keep actually because I really like it now, I think this is one that I've actually taken the outer one off of because I can see the cut through marks. So this is the inside of a copper to uh, toroidal transformer. And I'll show you exactly the sort of copper that you'll get off of these. That comes in the form of this stuff here. So what you'll get is you'll get the, the toroid and you'll just, the easiest way, cut all round down around the middle you can just bend it out and literally pull it out and it's you can see look at that beautiful bright copper there is nothing to not love about that copper is there nice so that's why i get the transformers so um other sort of householdy things <clears throat> obviously fans now this was a fan motor i think uh, and inside fans, you've, you can get those beautiful motors. But it's not just your standard fans. The ceiling fans, oh my goodness. Check this out. And I think I actually um, briefly showed this in last week's video. Mesmerising, isn't she? So you've got these beautiful, beautiful copper nodules in there. Now... I haven't yet come across a ceiling fan that doesn't actually have copper in it. I'm sure there will be aluminium ones out there, but I but the norm 
and the nature of the fan and the fact that actually they depending on where you are obviously in the country you're in they can get a lot of use copper is the, the, the sort of standard thing that we're going with there so you can see just inside that and that that would be on the ceiling like so casing and the fan blades snap off those blades and i know a lot of you established scrappers know this already um but we still like to have a little look don't we beautiful little play with it gorgeous i love it so the other um nice thing that i love about the crt tvs which i'll just touch on now is so down the line i'll be making some copper goodies ingots and such out of just one particular thing so like the crts but another beautiful thing that you get in them is the degaussing cable now the degaussing cable is the thick cable that goes around the screen. As you're on the outside of the screen, is a good example of one I haven't stripped. So this is from quite a small, uh, probably computer monitor. Now, don't be sticking that in your VIR now, will you? Your household cable because we all love what comes out of a degaussing cable. And this is a stripped, here's one I did earlier, folks, as they would say on Blue Peter. This is a stripped degaussing cable. Now look at it. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Really lovely, thick, bright copper. And uh, couldn't be easier to get. Um, it's just gorgeous. So don't ever leave that degaussing cable behind. I'm sticking back in my copper tanks. So, just clear some of this copper out of the way. Okay, so we're sort of coming into cable and cordage. Now, there's a real debate on what's worth stripping, what's not worth stripping. And of course that changes with time. So old videos, aren't necessarily going to be as accurate because the price of copper fluctuates like all metals and the energy stripping it especially if you use a you know electric motor to strip it electric stripper so with regards to the cable i have a general rule of if i can bend the cable and it keeps its bent shape i strip it now, obviously, this is um, cable from uh, wiring house, which I have entangled with my lovely copper hoard. And typically, this is what you'll find in skips. So, give the door a little knock. Or if you're like me, I've got some brochures that um, explain what I do and ask if they'd like me to create more room in the skip. So, if, there's, if they're not at home, you can just stick a flyer through. But if you get the permission from the person, you can get it out of the skip. And I've said on that. So, this is beautiful. So, out of this lovely household electrical wire, that strips to this stuff. Okay? So, it strips down to it strips down to these with a plain copper bit inside, the black and the red. And then you strip that outer casing off and it comes to these. If you don't have the time or the inclination to do a full strip, what you can do is you can take off the outer casing and you've got some really nice quality thick singles wire. It would depend on your yard as to what grades they take cable in. but. Um, Sometimes just taking the time to take out one outer layer of casing, especially with a really low VIR cable, that can massively increase what it's worth. Such like your Hoover, uh, your vacuum cleaner. Cords that when you strip them, uh, it just gives a pretty... Let me show you up here, because I used to. It's a pretty low amount of copper, rough uh, 
this rough wiry stuff um, now you know for someone who keeps copper it's worth doing if you keep all your copper to stack yeah you're going to spend time doing it but it is labor intensive there's the outer casing the insulation and you've got three more that you need to strip for not a huge amount of copper they're, they're quite small each one individually but but again if you're keeping all your copper to stack or melt or whatever it's worth doing if you're taking it into the yard it's not really worth stripping it um, because the price of the VIR is so good that by the time you lose all that weight in the insulation you're not really going to get any more for this so to take it in it's not worth it so that's why I don't strip my VIR that I'm taking into the yard and I've got so much of the decent copper still to strip that I don't currently strip my VIR, my household cable. It isn't worth it. And also, I can put all the data cables and everything in the VIR. You're never going to strip those. They've got minuscule um, cables in. Just absolutely not worth it. I'll just show you some of my cable hoard in a second. So, that nice stuff strips to this lovely. Uh, we've got different grades here. This is a bit thinner. I'm not good on my meals. You know, some people are like, I could just roll that off the tongue. Not great with my measures, guys. So I just say this is thinner and this is thicker. <laughs> but this is, look at this. Now this is from, I don't think I've got any in here at the moment. The Big Earth Cable. To Teddy's to carry you. Oh, you carry me, Teddy, that's nice. Well, here's a smaller okay. example. This is the Earth. Actually, I think that might be it. <clears throat> So this is a smaller example that you'd get sort of this size from. Lovely cable to strip. The earth cables. Again, skips your friend. Electricians, your friends. And plasterers, your friends. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So, yeah, typically in a skip, this is how it will come. Like this. So you, all you've got to do is just process the junk off there. And then neatly put your cable away in a position where you can actually strip it. So this thick stuff's what you want. Different things can lead to different thicknesses of copper. And again, different colours of copper. Sometimes it's got a lacquer on it. For me, it doesn't matter. I know some people won't melt their copper that's got the lacquer on. I'm not in a position to be able to be that choosy <laughs> and I just keep it all. So this, this will be going, you know, in the furnace. Now, I always get all of my cable out of skips. You'll have seen when I got this hoard out, it's nice and thick. You've got your th really nice thick single strands in there to get out um can be a bit time consuming i know some people like ian just whip it out with a knife but i, I just don't have the it, the cable to me is a round to it job because i'm not taking it in you know it's fine but look at this occasionally whew, you'll get a beautiful now this i can't wait to strip unfortunately i haven't got a huge amount of that but allow me to show you Sometimes there's just not time to get around to everything. So I have a plumber friend who very kindly, if the, if the builders on site are not taking it, will just bag up beautiful cordage for me and I can take it, um, strip it when I get the chance. Plus I get a few bags of this. I could take it in for a pretty penny, so I don't want to do that. I remember this has got cordage in it as well, I think it has. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you get thicker, thinner. Oh, so this was all out of, I got this myself out of that skip. You'll have seen that one, it's the thumbnail, it's just literally my boot full of this cable. That was fantastic. And then look at this. You know, I'd forgotten I had this in here actually. This is really valuable, beautiful cable. And uh, 
I very much look forward to stripping it at some point again when that will be I don't know and I think part of my thing is is that because I'm not actually I don't have my furnace yet I'm not in really in a rush to to do that when I get the furnace of course I will be very eager to get my stuff stripped is this, what's this oh hmm. just some cans which probably smell delightful in the summer so yeah anyway nice cordage oh while we're here actually I suppose I'll just go through this a bit with you I showed it briefly last week so inside your e-waste you'll get some nice copper bus bars sometimes now this doesn't look like copper but give it a scratch and you'll see it's just plated copper which is beautiful and then your pipe work is obviously another really nice source so plumbers are your friends of course nowadays most of them take their own stuff in however um, it depends what type of plumbers so I have got some boiler installers on my books really lovely guy called Luke and Luke takes all the external pipe work but he isn't interested in stripping out the boilers so I get the boilers so inside boilers you can get some beautiful very nice so he doesn't even take this stuff off the bottom so this is an example of the beautiful copper you can get off the boilers you know lovely uh, not only that, on the control panels of the boilers, here's an example. Inside you can get some, I've obviously taken the PCB itself off, but you can get some really nice cordage and singles wires. Uh, singles wires, which I haven't got a docket at the moment. Wow, look at this as a comparison. I was just looking in here to see if I could um, get the last price I got for singles wire and uh, look at the price differences here so what the date this one was September this was September last year right copper alley rads in September last year so seven months ago now was £1,700 a tonne. Now, it's £2,700 a tonne. So it's gone up £1,000 a tonne in seven months. And actually, it's not even in seven months because we've been at this price for a while. Uh, same with the aluminium that I was mainly about the other day. It was £750 a tonne. Now it's £900 a tonne. So that's gone up nicely as well. I don't think I had any household cable on this old one. But anyway, yeah, isn't it nice how it how it um, adds up? What was the eye in there? Two forty. That was two twenty. One hundred eighty a ton. So yeah, like the mixed iron, one hundred eighty a ton is now two forty a ton. No wonder the whole world is scrappers now, is it? Anyway, um, I don't think I've got any recent enough buckets on here to show you the singles. I haven't put, I haven't put them in for quite some time. They're in my indoor. It depends where I do the weigh and pay, where I finish off as to where that docket goes. <laughs> the indoor folder or the outdoor folder. Okay, anyway, so back on to boilers, plumbing, that kind of thing. Obviously, you know, you've got your under sink uh, under sink pipes um, collection oh, I forget the name now those copper alley rads here's an example inside air conditioning units absolutely beautiful if you don't want to strip them and I'm 50-50 even though I love all my copper it's a bit time consuming so you can just snip off these noodles here just snip them off and these sexy copper-legged lady 
in shorts <laughs> then you can do that now obviously there is a source of copper in refrigeration fridges freezers blah 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 i don't go for it because of the freon that's inside i don't release that into the atmosphere it's actually against the law to do so if i if you are a freon um, accredited recycler then whoopie do you could really rake it in on those you know the condensers that is in them but for the environment and the sake of getting a little bit of copper i'm going to keep my conscience clear keep my conscience clear and just leave that well alone now back in the plumbing realm showers it's it's hit and miss with showers but there is usually a little bit of nice copper in there let me show you now here we've got an aquawave creeder shower unit again out of a skip not only do you have a really nice wad on the electrics going into this okay so you've got a nice obvious pipe on the outside of this shower and then hopefully it's hit and miss on the little tank that's inside i'll open this one up in a minute and we shall have a look now um pc power supplies and other power supplies also have nice little transformers now these transformers can be stripped to get copper like this that's from one of those or take it off chuck it in your motors and transformers nice and easy adds up really well so now i said about vacuum cleaners it's very hit and miss on the vacuum front as to what motor you're going to get and different ones, different popularities, different, you know, whether it's worth getting it out or not. Now, types like this, no good resale parts. This is just some generic, crummy old uh, power cleaning hoover. That, no hesitation to strip. However, these, Henry's, which I have stripped and do strip, sometimes, even as a faulty unit, you can actually do well setting these on. And um, there's a bit of a following for the Henry and the Hetties, uh, the switches. And if you look at um, Boot Sewing, he's a good example of someone who can pull out some Henry switches to try and repair one. Sometimes it's not always the motor, it's it's just a simple thing like the switch. So, although, yeah, you can get a nice big copper motor out of them. Sometimes it might be worth more money, but again, we don't have, all have time for resale, and I have very little time for resale at the moment, especially now I've got two extra children to take care of. Resale for me is, is pretty out, to be honest. So they may end up getting scrapped out. But the switches as I mentioned, can be pretty nice. Now, switches contain contacts. I'm always showing them in my videos. You know, I love a contact. Well, sometimes they're copper. Sometimes they're silver. Sometimes they're even gold. But you can see in here that I've put the whole thing in ready for to get the silver off. But it is also a mini source of copper also and in your plugs like i showed the other day you get copper as well as your brass not just brass so that's nice as a little source also now sometimes uh other mechanical things will have a uh, a source of copper that you weren't expecting this is an example of that now this came out of the long strip I'll show you a picture of a stair lift 
and I've got more of it in there. I just cut a bit off to show you because it's quite, um, it'll get you in the eye if it can get away with it. The uh, scrap gods and goddesses like to get you with this sort of stuff. Um, but it's a lovely, nice bit of copper in there. And it lined all the way up for the lift to actually move along it. So basically my advice is anything mechanical, anything that moves, uh, that's electronic especially, then bust it open, have a look, because chances are you're going to get some form of copper out of it. So yeah, you can get some nice copper out of all things electronic now the other thing is i've gone through all these different types of cable and the different thicknesses but i'd like to show you how sometimes you can get it in places you don't fully think about now i think an example of that is going to be this so this was like a backup battery pack that I was going to strip this morning. I thought, you know what? Well, I'll do it on camera so I can show you guys what's inside it. Okay. Don't you love it when you've got too much copper to ram in your drawers? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. So. Before I get on to actually opening a couple of bits up, just to see what we get. I'm going to show you, again, those less observant ones of you who haven't noticed this kicking around that I keep mentioning, and those who are new to my channel. This is a great example of a circuit board that's such a low grade it's a really low grade board you could chuck it in low grade um or you can utilize it strip it cherry pick some bits and i mean one example here is this look at this amazing copper toroidal inductor you know really nice so what i would do with this is quite simply just pull off the inductor beautiful isn't it and you can already see here i've i've just broken it and i've begun to now you can unwind these my son actually likes unwinding these for me but if you want to do it quickly you can obviously just cut but yeah it's almost on a little stand little toroidal sculpture and not just that obviously this one over here has got some really nice copper on it too it's lacquered but that doesn't matter that doesn't matter at all so i would also bust that off of there too now you could you could desolder i don't bother with desoldering unless it's something like a really nice component that i want to you know keep intact or what have you but if it's just me getting copper off the board woo, having a copper launch over there um then yeah i wouldn't bother so that's another and for max value you could just take off your transformers to chuck in these small ones here i wouldn't really bother stripping mm, potentially that one but it, again it's time is money isn't it so i would get those off the other thing i'll get off is obviously the aluminium the mosfets mosfets have a little copper plate in the in them so if you are into processing every single one of these has a copper plate underneath it this is the copper plate here. Here we go. You can see here. So this whole backing here is copper. Now again, this is a small scale, but if you 
or a micro strap on your hobby. It doesn't take much to take a couple of those off every time you go bored, you know. And then it'll be a fun thing. And I know Electronic Scrapper does a lot of experiments with how what kind of yields you get and stuff, which is nice. So, and then back to the relays. Now, relays. I've got the lovely copper solenoid inside in here and then you've got those bits of copper but here we can see they're actually brass but there are some copper contacts in there so you know your low grade circuit boards can actually give it a really nice little copper yield okay so i think we've got on to being able to open a couple of things up and just seeing what sort of copper we're going to get out of it which is always nice You've got your little drive things like, um, oh, here we go, like a CD drive, right? CD drive has got a little board on there that's got a little copper motor on it. And they can be a bit like this. Um, but I take them off and just put them in. I think I've already taken all of mine in. I just chuck them in motors and transformers. But you, same with... Uh, same with your floppy disks, see here? We've got a mini motor here. They break down to these. And I put the motor into mini motors. And I obviously take the brass rod. They don't all have a brass rod. Ooh, we've got some more noodles in there. But the majority of them do have a brass rod. So you've got another nice little source there is very nice okay so back on the plumbing side of it and uh showers so this does actually you can see they've had the obviously as you would had the uh other bit of copper pipe off of it i don't know whether this would be no i thought that's be rusted up a bit So we shall see what sort of tank we've got in here. As to whether it's worth, well I'd say it's worth it anyway to get the full length of that copper pipe and that nice cordage out. So we shall see. Okay, moment of truth, guys. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 yeah, baby! And this is why I always take the showers. You don't always get one, but you do sometimes get a nice little copper tank in there. Now, isn't that gorgeous? Not only that, look at these nice thick wires you got here. Let's see. Look at that. Yeah, really nice. Um, <coughs> also, you've obviously got a bit of brass, a bit of brassy goodness. That's the nut onto that lovely pipe. And then you've got these very thick wires. Oh, definite stripper balls. Look at that. So this little tiny shower unit that was just dumped in a skip has actually got some really nice copper inside. And I'm really pleased, that was a perfect example I could show you. Quite often the tank is a longer and not quite so, so curved. A bit like a long, odd shave. I have, I have shown you before. But so that's nice. Anyway, another... This is the sort of thing I want to get into to show you because I suspect there's going to be cordage in here that's going to be of a really nice quality now this just looks like a lump of plastic junk which mostly it probably is obviously i had the two batteries out of it which was of a, of a benefit to me um the screws are being stubborn in this one and that's one that's two 
too. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. This is Scrap Chat. That's what I do every Wednesday, a nice long video that everybody gets to talk alongside and people watching after us obviously don't get the live chat, but they get a long video they can stick on in the background or, you know, whatever. Um, but I've gained a few subscribers recently, so that's awesome. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I don't often ask this, um, but if you have liked the video it would be awesome if you could leave me a thumbs up i would very much appreciate it everyone always goes on about the algorithm i'm not too bothered about the algorithm you know i just do what i do i like showing what i do and i like people getting something out of it um so i don't follow too much what they say you need to do for the algorithm um but it is nice to see those thumbs up if people have actually liked it or not and what that would help do is the video get shown out to people who are watching similar content if, if enough people are liking it so that that there is a bonus there so i would appreciate that if if you do like what you see and if you don't fair enough i'm an acquired taste and i know it <laughs> anyway this is a great example of what i was trying to say here mostly plastic junk however you have got a nice wad of singles wires here You've also got a little power board, but then you've got this one. Now this is to connect the batteries, which means this is gonna have a lovely thick bit of copper on it. So I will show you. So, there we go. Have a look in there. And same for this one. And you've got a lovely brass terminal as well. The bigger ones typically tend to be copper. And look at that. Ah, glistening. There we go. So, yes, it looks like junk. But it's got some nice cordage. And if you're someone who just wants to build up this stuff, appreciate getting... Basically, this would just be thrown away can't stand the thought of something like this going into landfill there's so many beautiful metals here to save basically let's get back out got some aluminium <laughs> here as well more mosfet we've got capacitors another transformer you can put into transformers and look you've got all these mosfets as well see those Okay, I'm coming. Come in. Come in. Come in. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, um, I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, copper video. I've sort of shown you. It's probably you know. I know a lot of you are going to know all of that stuff already, but it is nice just to go through it and show some of the nice yields you can get, which is nice. And of course, we all know the lovely copper copper heating system tanks, which are yummy. And I love my copper fish that I feed all sorts of copper. It's surprising how much you can fit in this, actually. So anyway, yes, hope you enjoyed that. And hopefully I've been able to add some of my footage in of the, the examples of what I've actually taken apart. So... Thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing and just generally being here and part of this awesome community. I love it. Okay, so take care and I shall see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.